So are there recession proof stocks? I believe that there are. Today we're going to be going over five great stocks that tend to do well during a recession. And you might be sitting there and wondering, well, what is a recession? Well, it is when there is a business cycle contraction. Uh, if you want to have a definition, it is two consecutive quarters of negative GDP growth. Okay. So all that means is the world and the economy slows down. Are there stocks that tend to do well in that environment? There are, and we're going to get into that now. I just got into some data today and I am going to go through it with you. So since 1980, we've had six different recessions, right? Okay. That's whenever the world starts to slow down, the economy starts to slow, right? The last one we had was COVID-19. That was when the pandemic started, right? They had to turn off the machines. They told everyone to stay home. Well, that hurts economies and it hurts the stock market. So the recession start month was February of 2020 and the recession end month was very quick. It was April of 2020. So in this column, I've got the S&P 500 return during those few months. You can see that it was down about 9.7%. And then the one year return after we get out of the recession, what did the market do after that? The S&P was up almost 48%. So you can see global financial crisis, December of 07 to June of 09, much longer than the COVID-19 pandemic. You can see that during the recession, stocks fell 38%. It was ugly. I was on Wall Street during that time. Very, very ugly time. But the good news is we tend to bounce after these recessions. And in some cases, going through a recession, stocks are actually positive. So now you might be asking yourself, okay, well, what types of stocks tend to do well in a recession? Let's go ahead and get to our first one now. So my first recession stock is none other than Walmart. And full disclosure, I own that one in personal accounts. But if you're not familiar with Walmart, they are just a huge discount retailer. They practically sell everything at a very reasonable price. They sell stuff for the car, groceries, uh, anything to do with music, anything to do with school supplies. They have clothes. And not only that, they are also growing their online presence. And in fact, they are starting to compete a little bit with Amazon. So what we have here is the chart of Walmart. This is the one year chart of the big money buys and sells. You guys know that I love data. You can see that it's been relatively chop city over the past year. But if you look at it over multiple years, this stock has been a big winner. And these blue signals are indicating that the stock was going up with big money and it's got great fundamentals. And you can see back in the 1990s, this was a powerful growth stock. Now we're going to be looking at Walmart, how it actually performed during prior recessions. But I want you to just start thinking about recession type stocks. They pay dividends. They tend to be very well established names. You look at some of the fundamentals here and it scores relatively OK. But what I really like about it is the three year EPS growth rate of 41%. That is very strong for a Staples company. And then if we look at technicals, that's very strong. It's actually trading relatively near its 52 week high. So this is a name that is actually performing well in this market. Now let's look at prior recessions and how Walmart held up. By the way, if you like this type of content, make sure to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel. It really helps us out. So check out Walmart over the past six recessions. During the recession, Walmart was green every single time throughout the length and the average gain was 34%. I actually could not believe this when I was looking at the data, but Walmart just tends to do very well. And looking out a year after the recession ends, Walmart on average, is still up another 32%. Two years out, it's up 59%. So looking at history, right? Walmart tends to do very well in a recession, basically because people need to buy goods and services. And Walmart is one of the biggest and best ways to do that. And they continue to raise their dividend year after year. This is why it is the number one recession stock. Let's keep going. 
The number two recession stock is another steady eddy, and that is Abbott Laboratories. It's a huge healthcare name, and they're involved in a lot of stuff, whether it's healthcare equipment, medical devices, diagnostics. They're also involved in nutrition. I know when I my babies were little and I had to go buy baby food, Abbott Labs had some products that I was looking at. So over the past year, the stock has been very up and down in terms of big money. What stock hasn't? But over here to the right, you can see that over the long term, this stock has been a monster winner. These blue signals, that's the stairway to heaven. We know that it's a quality stock. We come down here, we look at the fundamentals and the technicals. The first one that jumps out at me is the one-year sales growth. It's very positive at 24%. We can look over here. The last time that this stock got a buy signal was December of 2021. So that's why it's getting penalized. It's all technical, but under the hood, it's very solid. Now let's look at how it has done in prior recessions. Going back in history through those recessions, we can see that Abbott Labs has done very well. And the average gain during the last recessions was 9.84%. But going even further, one year later, the stock was up on average by 13.57%. Two years later, it is up also double digits. So this has been a very solid name during recessions. The number three recession stock is Johnson & Johnson. Huge healthcare name, big biopharmaceutical giant. They have been around for over 130 years. So whenever you think about recessions, who's gonna be able to hang in there? Who's gonna be able to weather the storm? Big healthcare companies like Johnson & Johnson start to make sense. Let's go ahead and look at the one year chart. It is very choppy, but you can see it's in this range of 175. It's in the upper range down to about 155. So it doesn't move around that much, right? It's very stable. Over the long term, this thing has been a big money magnet, especially in the 90s. And in an environment right now where the yields are very low, this stock sports a 2.4% dividend yield, which is very, very strong. Look at the fundamentals you can see that the three-year EPS growth is 13.3%, super, super solid. And check this out, it trades near its 52-week high of 179.47, that is very positive technically. But how does Johnson & Johnson do during prior recessions? Well, you can see, wow, it is up on average 12.28%, it definitely Felt some pain during the global financial crisis, but only being down 12% is a win in that type of environment. You can look out one year after that recession, it had a modest gain of about 3%. It did not do so well looking two years out, but again, we're talking about during a recession, this stock has been a winner. The number four recession stock is General Mills, big, huge food company. They've got a lot of brands that we know and love, Cheerios, Betty Crocker, Pillsbury, you name it. So look, if people are kind of down in the dumps during a recession, they might turn to food that they know and love. General Mills is one of those types of companies. And obviously it's food. No matter what happens with the economy, people are gonna be buying food. Let's go ahead and look at the chart. On a one-year basis, it had some buying, then some selling. What's really interesting about it is it doesn't really move around that much. You can see that the range is 70 bucks down to call it 56. So again, very stable over the long run. Definitely a nice uptrend. Didn't have a lot of big money buying uh, recently. It has back in the 90s. Let's go ahead and look under the hood though. You can see the fundamentals are relatively decent. It's got a profit margin of 12.9%. I would also add that the forward yield is 3.2%. So in this environment, that is very strong. And then again, it's doing relatively well on technicals. One that I like is that it trades near its 52 week high, 69.90. The million dollar question is how is General Mills done during past recessions? You can see in the past six, it actually performed very well with an average return of 15.3%. You look at one year after that recession ended and the stock is still up on average 14.5%. You go out two years and the stock is up on average 
28%. This is very solid looking back at prior recessions. The number five recession stock is the Hershey Company. Super easy to understand business. They sell candy and chocolate, right? And some of the brands that they have is Hershey, Kit Kat, Reese's, you name it. I feel like Warren Buffett, you know how he always talks about his investment in C's candy. Well, Hershey is another one that just fits the bill during a recession. Now this chart has got a lot of juice. I mean, look at the big money buying going into this name. You look over multi years, this stock has very solid buying, big time uptrend. Let's go ahead and look under the hood real quick. And you know what I really like about it? It's got a profit margin of 16.5%. I think that's outstanding for this company and old stalwart. And here is the technical picture. It is solid across the board. And the last buy signal was this month, March 7th, 2022. So look at these recession returns for Hershey. So on average, over the past six recessions, the stock has gained 8.67%. I think even more impressive is one year after the recession is over, the stock is up on average 22%. Go out two years, stock is up on average just about 55%. So during and after a recession, Hershey has done extremely well. Look, I know recessions are not fun to talk about, but there are stocks that thrive during that type of volatility. Who knows what will happen in the future, but odds are these companies will handle it just fine. If you like this type of content, make sure to check out my latest video, which is the best growth stocks to buy for March. A lot of oversold opportunities there. Additionally, every single Sunday at 2 p.m., I release a video talking about the market. What's the big money doing? It's really cool stuff that you can't find anywhere else. Check it out. And always remember, think long term. I'll see you next time.